you have something you'd like to submit to the broadcaster, please make sure that it's into the office by November 22nd. Secondly, uh, if you attempted to access our web page sometime during the week, uh, you might have noticed that it was unavailable. Uh, you got an error message of some kind. Um, I'm very grateful to uh, Paul Schmidtke and Jim Westman who worked at rectifying that problem and it got solved uh, by Friday afternoon. So we're back in business and should be fine from here on out. But uh, if you were wondering what was taking place, that was, a, that was a technical issue that finally got resolved. And I'd like to uh, thank uh, the people who are working on our AV uh, production today. So that would be Paul Schmidtke and Jim Ackerman and Ron Schmidtke. Um, and that reminds me that uh, we could use some more help with uh, people to run PowerPoint during the services. Uh, if that's something you think you could help with, please contact the church office and, uh, and let us know that you'd be interested in that. Uh, and then finally, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that the newest issue of the Canada Lutheran uh, is here at the church. Uh, we have some copies in the narthex. Feel free to take one of those home if you would be interested in reading that. Our worship service today uh, is using the setting Now the Feast and Celebration. So all the music will be on the screen, not the music, but the words will be on the screen. But uh, hopefully you'll remember the music from before. And uh, let's take a few moments of quiet reflection as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. for confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy and abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Our gathering hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, number 733.
We continue with now the feast and celebration. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Amen. Operation, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom. Praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore power and riches wisdom and might all honor and glory to Christ forever now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore for God has come to dwell with us to make us people of God to make all things new now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The Lord be with you. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great leader who guards your people, will take his stand. It will be a difficult time. Nothing like it has ever happened since nations first appeared. But at that time, every one of your people who is found written in the scroll will be rescued. Many of those who sleep in the dusty land will wake up, some to eternal life, others to shame and eternal disgrace. 
Those skilled in wisdom will shine like the sky. Those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and always. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, Spirit of God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 16. There's a sung refrain, and then we'll be reading the verses responsively. Defend me, O God, for I have sought refuge in you. I have said to you, Holy One, you are my sovereign. From you alone comes all my happiness. All my delight is in the faithful who live in the world. And in the noble ones among the people. But those who pursue other gods shall be in painful trouble. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. Holy One, our hearts are glad and our spirits rejoice. Holy One, you are my allotted portion and my cup. You alone uphold my destiny. Pleasant are the lands that have fallen to me. My inheritance is beautiful. I bless you, Holy One. You guide me and nightly instruct my inner being. I set you always before me. With you at my right hand, I cannot fall. Holy One, our hearts are glad and our spirits Therefore, my heart is glad, my spirit rejoices, my body can live securely. For you have not abandoned me to the grave, nor allowed your faithful one to see the pit. You teach me life's path. In your presence is fullness of joy, at your right hand pleasures forevermore. A reading from Hebrews. Every priest stands every day serving and offering the same sacrifices over and over, sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when this priest offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, he sat down at the right side of God. Since then, he's waiting until his enemies are made into a footstool for his feet because he perfected the people who are being made holy with one offering for all time. Brothers and sisters, we have confidence that we can enter the holy of holies by means of Jesus' blood through a new and living way that he opened up for us through the curtain, which is his body, and we have a great high priest over God's house. Therefore, let's draw near with a genuine heart, with the certainty that our faith gives us, since our hearts are sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies are washed with pure water. Let's hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, because the one who made the promises is reliable. And let us consider each other carefully for the purpose of sparking love and good deeds. Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other especially as you see the day drawing near. Here ends the reading. Inspire Inspire our understanding, understanding, Spirit of God. I invite you to stand as we sing our gospel verse.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. As Jesus left the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, look, what awesome stones and buildings. Jesus responded, Do you see these enormous buildings? Not even one stone will be left upon another. All will be demolished. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives across from the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? What sign will show that all these things are about to come to an end? Jesus said, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many people will come in my name saying, I'm the one. They will deceive many people. When you hear of wars and reports of wars, don't be alarmed. These things must happen. But this isn't the end yet. Nations and kingdoms will fight against each other, and there will be earthquakes and famines in all sorts of places. These things are just the beginning of the sufferings associated with the end. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. The Sunday school children are welcome to head upstairs now for Sunday school time. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your word, which gives us assurances as we look to the future. As we reflect on your word this morning, may your spirit stir in our hearts that our hope might be renewed. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, prior to the service, uh, uh, one of the uh, people in, sitting in the pews asked me, what's with all the candles on the altar? I don't know if anyone else noticed that. Uh, those are actually left over from Mysterium, but I thought they matched the theme of uh, my message today, which is shine like the stars. They look a little bit like stars glittering on the altar there. So what is this shine like the stars stuff all about? Well, recently... Beth and I went to see a movie in a theater. That's the first time that's happened in many, many months. We saw Dune, the new science fiction movie, directed by the visionary Canadian Denis Villeneuve. Having been a fan of uh, Frank Herbert uh, and the books, the Dune books on which this movie was based, I wondered if I would be disappointed with this film. Well, the answer is both yes and no. The, cinema the cinematography and acting were great. The set design and the sound score was amazing. So, what was the disappointment? Only that this was Dune Part 1. The story is unfinished. The audience is left wondering, what will happen to the central characters? And we have to wait two years to find out before Dune Part 2 comes out. And Dune Part 2 wasn't even a certainty until this had a decent box office return. And then the studio said, okay, we'll make Dune Part 2. We like to know how things are going to turn out, don't we? We are uncomfortable with stories that don't wrap things up neatly. It's for that reason that I hesitate to start a novel if I know that there are more books coming in that series. If I get to the end of a book or a movie and there isn't some kind of resolution, I find myself impatient to get to the next installment so that I can find out how things will turn out in the end. 
The Bible contains a form of writing that wrestles with questions about the future, how things are going to turn out, what is going to happen in the end. This type of writing is called apocalyptic literature, and today we heard two examples of such writing in the appointed scripture readings. Apocalyptic literature depicts the struggle between good and evil in highly imaginative ways, and it seeks to respond to the concerns of people of faith who face an uncertain future, one that seems dominated by powerful forces they seem to have no hope against. Apocalyptic writings seek to bring hope into times when the people of God were dealing with feelings of uncertainty and even despair. The book of Daniel was set in the time of the Babylonian exile when the Jewish people had been removed from their homeland, their temple had been destroyed, and their identity as a people in a covenantal relationship with God seemed to be in question. How long must they suffer in that foreign land? How long must they live their lives under the rule of powerful pagan forces? How long, O oh God, how long? Into that bleak and hopeless setting, Daniel brings a word of God that offers hope for a happy ending, a future where they are restored to the land and affirmed in their identity as God's chosen people. Daniel promises a better future in spite of how powerful the forces against them seemed. Daniel portrays a future with struggle, a difficult time, as it's uh, written, but he also envisions a time of rescue and deliverance, even deliverance from death. The prophet Daniel writes, many of those who sleep in the dusty land will wake up, some to eternal life. Those skilled in wisdom will shine like the sky. Those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and always. Whatever the circumstances the people of God might be facing at that moment, whatever difficulties or struggles the people are needing to endure, these are just temporary troubles. The time is coming when God will set all things right, a time known as the day of the Lord, or alternatively, alternatively, the end of days. So the people in Babylon were encouraged to be patient, to hold on to hope, and the promise that your time to shine will come. Those who set an example by their righteousness will shine like the stars forever and always. What a hopeful image. It's interesting to note that this passage in the book of Daniel is the first and only time in the Hebrew scriptures where eternal life is explicitly mentioned. Daniel is offering a hope that extends beyond this life into the life to come. In the verses following the reading from Daniel chapter 12 that we heard this morning, we get this question. When will these astonishing things be over? The people not only want to know what is going to happen, they want to know when. But the answer given to Daniel is more confusing than helpful. The angel says, For one set time, two set times, and half a set time. And Daniel has to admit, I heard it but I didn't understand it. So he asks, what will happen after all this? But the answer Daniel gets is inconclusive. He's simply told to get going now, Daniel. As for you, go on to the end. You will rest and will stand to receive your reward at the end of days. So, 
Daniel is not given a timeline or a date. He's essentially told to stop worrying about such things and instead just get on with the work God has given him to do. Daniel is to do his prophetic work, trusting that in the end, God will give him the reward that he has been promised. So now we move to the gospel reading for today. In the gospel of Mark, uh, the gospel of Mark was the, the earliest of the gospels to be written down, somewhere in the second or third decade after Jesus' time on earth. By that point in time, many Christians were anticipating Jesus' imminent return. But they were also beginning to experience harassment, rejection, and persecution because of their faith. Such difficulties were bound to raise questions. Was Jesus actually the Messiah? Is Jesus ever going to return? If putting our faith in Christ is the right thing to do, why are we experiencing such troubles and hardships? These early Christian communities be began to echo a similar refrain as the Jewish people sang while in exile in Babylon. How long, O Lord? When will our hopes be fulfilled? When are our struggles going to come to an end? And what does the future hold for us? Today's gospel reading begins with the disciples expressing their wonder at the temple buildings, to which Jesus replies that the time is coming when those stone buildings will be demolished. The disciples want to know when this is going to happen. And the answer Jesus gives is in the style of apocalyptic writings. He says, Nations and kingdoms will fight against each other, and there will be earthquakes and famines in all sorts of places. These things are just the beginning of the sufferings associated with the end. Through Jesus' words, the gospel writer Mark is encouraging the early Christian community to be patient, to hold on to their faith, even as they go through difficult times, even as they're surrounded by wars and natural disasters. What may feel like the end to them is really just the beginning. The time is coming when Jesus' final victory over the forces of evil will take place as promised. But until, those, until then, those who follow Christ need to be patient and endure, especially in the midst of suffering and struggle. Perhaps... There are days when you feel uncertain about our future. When you feel overwhelmed by the continuous barrage of bad news, pandemics, environmental destruction, political turmoil, inflation running rampant, and weapons of mass destruction being tested. Where can we turn to for hope and assurance that things will turn out well in the end? Where can we look for strength when forces way beyond our control seem to dominate our lives? Look to Christ Jesus, the source of our hope and salvation. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews describes Christ Jesus as our great high priest who opened up the way to God for us through his own body. In the temple in Jerusalem, the very ones that the disciples were marveling at, the one that Jesus said wouldn't last. In that temple, there was an inner sanctum, a place so sacred, so special, that only the high priest could enter it, and that only happened once a year on the Day of Atonement. This was the place where the Ark of the Covenant sat. This was the place where God's presence amongst his people was focused. This was considered the throne room of God on earth. 
Now, through Jesus, our great high priest, we can enter the holy of holies with him. We are assured that we can come into the presence of God, not by our own worthiness, but because we are united with Christ, who was the perfect offering, an offering made once for all time. Through our baptism, we are united with Christ, and through that unification with Christ, we are brought into, ushered into God's presence. The writer of the Hebrews, letter to the Hebrews, proclaims that this happens through the certainty that our faith gives us since our hearts are sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies are washed with pure water. Through our baptismal connection with Christ, the one who died and rose again, we are assured of the ultimate victory over sin and death. The author of Hebrews encourages us to hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering because the one who made the promises is reliable. Even as the future of the world seems to be uncertain, we have hope. Even as the forces of evil seem to have the upper hand, we need not fear. Jesus is reliable. His promises are trustworthy. And we have been given the conclusion of this story. For the day is coming when Christ will end all evil and usher in the reign of God forever and ever. So, what do we do in the meantime? The author of Hebrew, Hebrews points out a path for us. He writes, let us, not con let us consider each other carefully for the purpose of sparking love and good deeds. Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some people have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day drawing near. The path into the future is a path we take together. The gathered people of Christ, gathered either in person or through the internet, we are gathered and we take this path into the future encouraging and supporting one another. Sparking love and good deeds. When we are sparked, to love and good deeds. We are participating in the vision Daniel saw. We become people who shine like the stars. That image is not just referring to the transformation that takes place in us when we are carried by Christ through the gate of death to life eternal promised to the faithful. To shine like the stars also happens in the here and now. As Paul wrote to the Christians in Philippi, from the second chapter. God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purposes. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure, innocent children of God, surrounded by people who are crooked and corrupt. Among these people, you shine like stars in the world because you hold on to the word of life. May you live your life with confidence in the promises of God so that fear is replaced with love, so that hatred is overwhelmed with compassion, so that darkness gives way to the light so that you reflect the life of Christ in your own life and shine like the stars. We are promised a shining future in the heavenly realms, and we are called to shine forth that hope in the here and now. People of God, 
Your time has come. Shine like the stars. Amen. Our hymn of the day is a hymn I found uh, from the early part of the 20th century. It's called, We Shall Shine as the Stars. And I'll ask Joshua to play through the whole hymn once, and then we'll sing it together. We shall shine as the stars. Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for a time of prayer. Each petition will end with the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, and your response, hear our prayer. We are glad and rejoice forever in you, O God. With joy we draw deeply from your well of salvation and pray that you may fulfill our story, the story of your love. Though the world has been gripped by trouble since early days and life has often been short and tormented, You have given us a vision of a day beyond the terrors, a day when the heavens and earth will be new again, a day when the sound of weeping will give way to delight, a time when all creation will live in peace and people will long enjoy the fruits of their labors. Help us hold to that vision when the temples about us are falling and our world is shaken. Strengthen us for the telling of your truth and for keeping to your path. 
that we might not weary in doing what is right, but through endurance may gain our souls, even as you desire for us to do. Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. As we pray for a new heaven and a new earth this day, we especially are aware of those among us and those beyond these doors who are in deep need of your peace, of your healing touch, of your just and bounteous kingdom. We pray those who dwell in places of strife, need, and want. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those struggling with illness, especially those in hospital. We remember this week Bill Weinbender and Marg Gross. And we pray for those who have been bereaved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are unemployed and those who fear layoff or termination and all those struggling with a burden in the workplace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for today for those of our brothers and sisters in Christ who face persecution because of their faith, for those who are deprived of their basic human rights and those who are deprived of their lives because of their desire to worship and serve you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us give thanks to the one to whom we pray, the one who brings both the snow and the sun, the one who heals this troubled world, the sick and those who turn to him in faith, the one who grants new life not only to us, but to the creation itself. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray to you in the name of the one who came to show us the way, he who is our Lord and our Redeemer, our brother and our friend. Amen. Amen. I would like to uh, thank you for uh, bringing your offerings and placing them in the uh, plate here in the center, those of you who are here in the sanctuary. And for those of you who have sent your offerings into us uh, through uh, the mail or dropping them off at the church or using pre-authorized remittance or e-transfers. I invite you to stand as we sing together our offertory in thanks uh, and remembrance of these gifts as the grains of wheat. Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. On the night in which you has betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba, as we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now if you would take your fellowship cups and open the first portion so that you can get at the bread. The body of Christ given for you. The Lamb of God, the blood of God, the blood of Christ shed for you. You may be seated and we'll sing the Lamb of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing our post-communion canticle. Thanks be to you. Let us pray. Most gracious and generous God, you open your hand and feed those who hunger. Grant us faith to trust your wise providing, 
courage to share our bread, and grace to pour out our lives in service to others as Christ poured out himself to us. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look on us with favor and give us peace. Go in peace, inspired by Christ, to love and serve.